All right, what do you think? Should we get going? Yeah? yeah. yeah. All right, let's do this. So the um, title of my presentation is called Vex IQ and the STEM Pipeline, and I'm going to explain a little bit of what I mean by the title, but uh, just a brief introduction. So uh, my name is Mike Rossetto. I'm the lead technical mentor for Team 1678, the Citrus Circuits. Uh, I'm also a mechanical engineer working in the robotics field. Uh, I began uh, building robots back in 2001 as a student in a program called FLL. And this is, so this, uh, based off some basic math, this is gonna be my 18th season in robotics. Um, and I started mentoring uh, 1678 in 2008 when I started there as a freshman in college after graduating from the amazing 114 Eagle Strike. Um, so on some days amazing. On some days amazing. Not so much today. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, why am I here and giving this particular presentation? So I love the first robotics competition. I think it's just an amazing opportunity for high school students. Um, and and I, in, in kind of in essence, 1678, we really want to see all first robotics competition teams be sustainable on the long term. We think that's really important. Um, that these FRC teams don't die out because once an FRC team dies out of a high school, it's like 10 times harder to get that program back into the same high school because the administration knows that the program has floundered and they're less likely to support it going forward. Um, and then I think we just kind of happened upon a recipe for success on 1678 that I've been sharing uh, bits and pieces with, with different people as I've been talking with them. But I've just been getting more and more excited about the method, the model that we found on 1678. So I really want to share that with uh, the teams here. And then, um, hey, Justin, I don't have a charger for this laptop. So can you find whoever's laptop this is and find the charger? Thank you. Um, and then I think, I think this is a very simple plan that every FRC team, doesn't matter if you're in a small community or a big community or a wealthy community or an underserved community, I think any FRC team can follow a lot of these principles and have a lot of success in bolstering their STEM pipeline and their sustainability as a team. So. Um, the contents of the presentation, we're going to go through the, what I think the overall goal is for a robust STEM pipeline uh, as it retain, pertains to your FRC team. We're going to go over the basic strategy for meeting that goal. Uh, we're going to go over our primary tool for this program, which is the VEX IQ platform. Uh, we're going to talk about the methods for using VEX IQ to achieve our strategy or our general approach towards sustainability. Uh, we're going to go through a little bit of the history and a case study on 1678 and explain a little of the background of how it's worked out for us over the last couple of years. And then uh, I'll have a few other notes and we'll have uh, hopefully a lot of time for questions because a lot of this stuff, this is my first time presenting on this topic. And so I'm sure there's stuff that I've missed that I'd love for us to have some time for Q&A at the end. Um, so this is the goal that I've kind of envisioned. I think the goal for this STEM pipeline is to ensure each FRC team has a consistent high school graduating class of self-motivated, technically competent students. So I think for FRC teams to be successful at accomplishing their mission, they want to see a consistent graduating class year after year. You know, you imagine, I know a lot of teams have ups and downs. They got a really big class, and then they have small classes. They got good kids, and then they feel like they're pulling teeth out, you know, in other years to just get kids to do anything. We want to ensure that FRC teams have a consistent group of inspired students year after year after year that they're churning out into college, sending them out, and really accomplishing their mission as an FRC team. Um, and so I think the, the strategy we're going to go through is, is really going to uh, go work towards that goal. Um, so our starting point. So what are we, as an FRC team, what are we starting out with? What are the resources that we have at our disposal? Uh, we generally have teachers or mentors or a little bit of both. Uh, we got some parents of students on the team. Uh, we have students. You know, every FRC team has at least some students on the team. Uh, we got some meeting space. Maybe you have a classroom that you meet in or you share a classroom with a teacher or some teams have their own shop. Uh, and then, uh, you know, FRC teams have experience in robotics and that can't be under understated. A lot of people don't have experience in robotics like FRC teams do. Um, but I really believe out of all these, the students really are your number one resource as an FRC team. And the goal of this particular STEM pipeline proposal is you're using your students to the best of their capacity in order to achieve consistency and sustainability in your team. So your students are not going to continue to just be customers of your program. They are now going to add value into your program. So your program is more sustainable on the long term. And hopefully, if you're an adult in the room that's supporting the team, it takes some of the load off of you as an adult. Um, and then what do FRC teams, gener FRC teams generally not have? 
Uh, FRC teams generally do not have a lot of money to throw around, and I, I include ourselves in that category, and then time during winter and spring. That's generally, especially that build season and beginning into competition season, it's pretty much hands off of doing almost anything else, and it's focused on the robot. And that's not a bad thing, it's just something to work around, and so this considers that as well, as far as uh, the time that's available for an FRC team. So what's our overall strategy going to be? So I think there's going to be three main points we're going to try to do. We're going to try to engage students better. We're going to try to grow them better. And then we're going to try to sustain that, that whole program. So we really need to hook kids early. And especially when we're talking about um, bringing in more diversity and inclusion in, FR, in FRC programs, a lot of times by the time students get to high school, they've already made up their mind whether or not science is the thing for them. Okay, and so that's an uphill battle. No charger? Uh, camera can't get it. Okay, that's fine. So uh, that's really an uphill battle for FRC teams is they, these high school students have already had, or the, these students have already had nine years of people telling them, oh, you know, robotics is for guys, girls can't do programming. You know, I mean, they've had nine years of that, re that repeated message being told them. And so if we're really gonna get more students, get a more diverse group, and get a consistently strong performing group of students, we need to hook them early. Um, secondly, we need to develop, uh, we need to engage our own FRC students further. Maybe you, your high school students are really engaged from build season through competition season, and then once April uh, comes and goes, you never see them until January comes around again. And that's really not leveraging your FRC students to the best of their potential either, so we wanna try to engage them further. Um, Obviously, we want to grow our students more. And so growing in size of the team, but also in tech. If you guys want to come in, great. If not, do you mind moving the trash can so the door closes? Thank you. Um, and then we also want to grow, grow the depth of each student. So we want stronger students, students that are more talented than the generation before them and the generation before them. Um, and then lastly, we want, we want to pick and approach uh, a method that is sustainable year to year that isn't a top-heavy approach that just one or two adults on the team are having to maintain everything and they're getting burned out year after year after year um, and then we want and with that comes distributing the workload amongst a lot of individuals which is where our students are going to come in and we'll talk more about that but i think we want this is going to be our strategy for developing a robust stem pipeline so how are we going to do it well i think the tool we need to use is vex iq and I'm going to explain more of the reasons going forward. But to give you an intro into what VEX IQ is, it was developed by VEX Robotics. Um, they make a lot of parts for FRC as well. It was released in about 2012, so it's fairly new on the block as far as robotics platforms go. Um, the recommended kit includes four motors, sensors, and a remote control that they can use to control the robot remotely so it doesn't all have to just be pre-programmed. Um, and then the uh, VEX IQ offers what they call a classroom bundle, which is 12 of these super kits. So it's got 12 of these kits that have four motors, a bunch of sensors, a bunch of construction equipment, a controller, a battery, a rechargeable battery. And then it also has, um, it has instruction manuals where you can build this basic robot that you see right here. You can build this in a matter of hours and load up the stock code and students can start competing with a basic robot or they can tear it all apart and build up from the ground from the ground up a brand new robot that they want to build. So uh, this is an example of what the robot looks like finished. And then right here is what the kit, uh, the kit that it comes in. I don't think this is a complete kit. I think this is just a box that I grabbed from our room. We have a lot of them in the shop. Um, but if you guys don't mind, let me just pass it around and you guys can check it out. You know what, the box is not very interesting, but let's pass around the robot. Um, so feel free to pass around, play with it, whatnot. Um, but that's the, that's the platform that we're going to do a lot of are we're going to base this STEM pipeline around is the VEX IQ platform. And you'll see why it comes into play later. Yeah. Michael, do you know what the ultimate <coughs> first cost is? I For each kit? The, the bundle. Like if you oh, gosh. Start a program. So the bundle is, I think, around, don't quote me on this, it's around 3300 Okay, so that's a startup cost. That's a startup cost. It's, if you buy them individually, they're about $330 a piece, yeah. the, the super kits which is what we recommend. Uh, but then I think th there's, there's, a, there's a bit of a cut when you buy the classroom bundle. That's the, that's the startup cost. Okay. But I'll explain why the finances work out in a, in a second. Okay. Hey guys, please. Okay, great. So methods. So we talked about our strategy. Basically our strategy is to engage a bunch of students, to grow them technically and grow the team in size and uh, sustain the program year after year. And then we're going to do this with VEX IQ and our methods 
the tools or the, the way we're going to go about that is through summer camps, a fall VEX IQ league, and, and growing in K through eight classroom programs. All right. And we're going to break each one of those down. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to be interspersing in some adorable pictures from all of our events over the past couple years that you guys get to enjoy, uh, taken by some of our 38, 3850. 3850. Okay. 3850. Um, so summer camps, what are summer camps? Um, so, uh, our summer camps at least and again this is just a model you could take this model you could tweak it however you want but for our summer camps we have 24 uh, students uh, we do grades fourth through eighth grade um, and so that's 24 students per week our camps run from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Monday through Friday during the summer um, the cost that we charge is $250 per week which honestly this is uh, oftentimes cheaper than daycare so like we like this our, our like our camps have been sold out the last two years and I'll explain more of that later um, but the camp requires one adult to be kind of the responsible adult the one with the keys um, etc and then between four to ten high school students to be your camp counselors and that's a really cool opportunity for high school kids um, so you can host it in a classroom or uh, like a multi-purpose room at a local junior high or elementary school um, it's roughly a five thousand dollar investment overall to start summer camp. So we met, we saw, we heard that it's like thirty eight fifty to buy the classroom bundle, and then there's a, a competition field that you're going to want to buy with the game elements, and that's another three hundred or so dollars. But once you have those things, you can use school laptops or school desktop computers to load up the software, and then you're good to run a camp. And that's been that's been the model that sixteen seventy eight has run. Um, and when you do the math, you're doing $250 per student. You got 24 students, that's $6,000 in revenue. So you can offset the, the initial investment of your camp within one week of camp. And if you're pushing and maybe you do two weeks your first summer, you can offset the cost and make some money and maybe pay stipends to the adults that are volunteering for the camp or put that fundraising straight into your team. You can do a lot of things with that money. Um, and then uh, vexrobotics.com has uh, summer camp curriculum for VEX IQ already online. So you can just follow the model that they suggest online. The curriculum's already prepped for you. And it's, it's geared straight for summer camp. So based off the level of the students in your summer camp and how many hours, like basically how many sessions you can do during a, uh, your summer camp, how many hours you have with the students, you, you can pick and plug and play which curriculum on VEXrobotics.com works for your camp and then build a program around it. Um, so that's what we do on 1678 and we're working on getting our resources together so we'd be happy to share exactly what we do on a on a day-by-day -day basis at our summer camps that you could take and, and run with for your summer camps as well we're happy to help with that um, so summer camps method number one and we'll go back a little bit we're gonna be jumping around a bit the second approach oh and I just wanted to highlight too this obviously engages young students early and so you're gonna get kids in the community that maybe haven't done robotics before but the key here is you're also engaging high school students. Four, or ten, four to 10 high school students from your FRC team are now spending their summers volunteering and feeding into this snowball effect that we're gonna see um, developing. The Fall of XIQ League. So this is essentially running uh, like a qualifier tournament in your local community. And then, uh, so Vex IQ releases a brand new game every year. The game gets released in April of that year. So by the time you, um, you're, you're starting this whole process, the game is already out, which is great. So then you can start teams at any point from April on. Um, Vex IQ teams are generally two to 10 students. Around third through eighth grade is the right age group for that. We have actually, we have second grade teams as well in our local community, but that's just because there's like overachieving parents that want to get their kids in real early. Uh, but third through eighth grade tends to be the, the right age group. Um, the way that we do it is we ask parents to be the team coaches. So we ask for um, parent volunteers who, you know, there's a lot of parents that want to get their kids involved in this stuff. We say, that's great, but if a team is going to form, we need a couple of, of adults to take on the logistical overhead for your, your team unit. So that means that you're going to collect some participation fees from each of the families that are doing it, and then you're going to go out and you're going to buy the needed equipment for your after school team, okay? Um, and what we do to engage our FRC students in that process, we do a couple of things we train our students to be mentors 
and we assign student mentors to each one of these after school teams in the community. So I get connected with the coach, and actually I don't really do it. Um, one of our students organizes all of our student mentors. They get connected with the coach, they find out what that meeting time is and meeting location, and then we get our high school student who has an open time during that time. Justin's a student mentor, right? Mango, are you a student mentor? Yeah. All right. So. Um, so they, they head over to that meeting time for that team and they're helping them out. They're giving them advice. And the reason we do this is because it's really easy for, well, it's not easy, but it's a lot easier for a parent to commit to being a coach if they know that they don't have to understand the robot side at all. We say, you know what, if you know nothing about robotics, you know what I mean, you were an English major and this is not your cup of tea, computers do not agree with you, that's fine because we're going to give you a student mentor who can help the kids out on the technical side. They've been trained on the VEX IQ kit because maybe they were a summer camp counselor or maybe you've trained them at one of your after school meetings and they're ready to go to give you the technical advice that you need. All you need to do is show up supervise the meeting, find a place to meet, and buy the equipment. And our students will handle the technical aspect of training them up, and your students will have a good experience that way. And so, so that makes it way more scalable than if you say, OK, it can only be a parent that also has 40 hours a week to devote to this VEX IQ program, and they've built robots before. You add all these criteria, it's not going to work out. So we make it as easy for parents to say yes, and then we handle the rest of the stuff that really we don't expect them to understand off the bat. And generally, as the parents get on, they get excited about it, and so they start to understand the way that the flow of things, and by the time the second year comes around, the parents really got it, and the parent coaches tend to be super solid their second year, third year. Uh, the first year can be a little rough, but that's why the student mentors are there. They're really there to help, and it's a big benefit to the student mentors that are volunteering too because now they're gaining experience of what it's like to mentor, what it's like to gently guide students, and what that looks like teaching, and they learn more as they teach. It's, it's just it's a great way to do things. Um, aside from starting teams, working with parents to start teams, and providing student mentors, the, the Citrus Circuits, have, we run VEX IQ tournaments in our community. So we actually run them right out of the high school where we meet at. Um, we can just run them in the smaller of the two gyms. It doesn't take a lot of space. Um, we, we charge a $50 event registration fee and all that money comes right to our team. Uh, no one else takes a cut out of it besides like the 3% processing fee for credit cards. Um, and so that means we're getting around $1,200 per event because we have about 24 teams at each of our events and we run three events each year. So we run an event in October, an event in November, an event in December, and they generally all fill up either with mostly Davis teams, but sometimes teams from uh, out of town too that are also participating in VEX IQ. Um, and the great part about it is RECF, Robotics Education and Competition Foundation, they're the organization that um, oversees all the tournaments. Uh, they, if you start a VEX IQ tournament, they will give you the trophies for free. You just got to email and say, hey, I just started a VEX IQ. And they're like, that's awesome. Thank you so much for doing that. Here's a voucher. You can go online and buy the trophy kit, and it'll, it'll show up as free on your balance, and we'll ship it to your house. And then you have awesome little trophies to give out at your event. Um, and so for these VEX tournaments, our high school students are running those tournaments. So our high school students are the referees. Our high school students are organizing the entire event. They're emailing the teams with reminders. Hey, make sure you check in at this time. Here's a schedule for the event. They're doing all the queuing, all the uh, robot inspection, all the emceeing, everything. They're doing the entire tournament. We only have a couple of adult parents that volunteer to judge. They do a STEM research project as part of being on a VEX IQ team. So we have a couple parents that judge that aspect of it. But if we really needed to in a pinch, we could have our seniors do that aspect of the competition as well. It's very flexible. And again, this is because, at least in my experience, I don't have a lot of adults that are clamoring to just take on a ton of responsibility. That's often my experience in robotics. And so we need to be able to leverage our high school students in every way possible if it's going to be sustainable, including the events that we run. And RECF, the, the organization that oversees all this, they're totally fine with the way that we run it. In fact, they're super excited that we're doing it this way and that we have high school students putting on these events. So this has been a big win for us is running these events. They've been super easy to put on. We'd be more than happy to share exactly how we put on the events. We have little volunteer roles written up for everything. Like Again, we're going to work on trying to get this published in a more organized manner. but. I get like that that has been a game changer for our whole community because now we have three robotics events every year happening in our town so we get the newspaper out there all this sort of stuff it's very fun um, and again all put on by high school kids with guidance but all put on by high school kids so the last one and this is somewhat something that we're still learning about and learning how to get better at is uh, our involvement in the k-8 through classrooms because 
So we've been doing this for around four or five years now. And we found that although these programs are really great, the, the, the teams are great, the summer camps are great, generally in both of those demographics, you still only catch the kids with parents that take initiative. And so you're, you actually, you're still, you're still serving a limited demographic where you have, your demographic is uh, students that have involved parents, invested parents in one way or another. And so we really believe that if we're gonna reach every student in our community, we need to get into the classroom where every kid is passing through the classroom. And so uh, we've been actually using the money that we raise in summer camps to fund grants for elementary and junior high schools in our community so they can buy classroom bundles and then they start classes at the junior high and the elementary school level with those classroom bundles and then we run a teacher training day where Steve our main teacher he gets paid to do a continuing education class with the, some of the junior high and elementary school teachers in the community that are going to run a VEX IQ event so he trains them on how to teach VEX IQ for six or seven hours on a, on a weekend or a weekday before school starts they, the teachers get paid for being there he gets paid for being there by the school district he's training them and now they have the some of the tools that they need to run their vex iq class over the school year um, there's also resources to integrate vex iq into various aspects of common core so if that's something that the school district is interested in that is absolutely available to you um, and our 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 K through eight classrooms have run them either as a class during the day, or sometimes the teacher's like, I, I can't figure out how to fit it consistently in my class period, but I'm really interested in it. So I want to get a group of kids to stay after school, right from like 2.30 till 3.30 in my classroom. And we'll do a team or a couple of teams in the classroom. It'll just be right after school, which is also a very valid option. So we, we, we've had both. And like I said, this is a growing process. So we have, I, I want to say we have two junior highs, and three or four elementary schools right now in Davis that are doing this. We're hoping to grow that further and we're gonna kind of see how it evolves, but this is where we're at right now. We ran our first teacher training, that went really well. Um, so I think this is gonna be a great way. And again, the key for this, I mean, it's obviously great to get in the classroom, but we really want to serve some of these minorities and underserved communities that we haven't been able to reach with our other two branches of this platform. So that's why we've been really pushing K through eight classrooms uh, a lot more in our, um, in our community. So let's talk a little bit about how the methods fulfill our strategy. I think I went in, I went in this a little bit, the me, but the methods being summer camps, leagues, uh, fulfill our strategies in a number of ways. In, in engaging, we, we need, like I said before, we need to catch K through eight students early. Um, so VEX IQ can start as early as third grade. I mean, I've heard of it starting even sooner, obviously, but third grade is a really great time where they can build just that robot that you were passing around. There's instructions for that exact robot. So it's really easy for young kids to get involved. They can load up the stock code and start scoring points, playing the game. And they're driving the robot around and there's so much psychological positive feedback that happens in that loop. It's way easier for them to get hooked. And then the next year they learn sensors. Maybe they build a little bit more custom of a robot and it just feeds off itself. Um, the, uh, for FRC students, again, we, we want to get students more invested. And so what this does is this takes our FRC program from being something where the students only have a common goal or objective from January through April. And now when April ends, they're getting excited to be camp counselors in June and July. And then when June and July end, they're getting excited to be student mentors for these VEX IQ teams. And then when late fall, December comes around, now they're getting excited to volunteer at these events and they're learning They're they're learning ev in every step of this process, but that's getting them more engaged and excited too. So you're really, you're, you want FRC students' lives to more and more revolve around robotics. So that just means that their time and their energy is going to be going towards the program. I'm, I, this is, this is what we do, all right? I mean, yeah, anyway, it's, we, I call it buy-in, but it's really like, I don't know, Kool-Aid, yeah. Um, <laughs> So grow, so uh, we talked about a strategy being to grow students and grow students well. Um, being a part of VexIQ, obviously you're gonna learn skills like design, programming, communication, leadership. Those are all things that VexIQ students, and, and I like this, this is a picture from summer camp, so all our counselors are in these summer camp t-shirts in the back, and all these students are on computers learning how to code. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that picture in my mind. That's, this stuff's pretty amazing. 
Um, and then the FRC students, like I said before, they're learning how to mentor and teach. It's a really great growing opportunity for them. They're learning how to run events, which is a really cool experience for them too. But I mean, one of the things that I always say is you don't really know something until you've taught it. And so this gives students an opportunity to teach things and learn it even, uh, kind of ingest it further themselves. And then being sustainable, uh, financially, financial independency is really important. And like we said, FRC teams are not crawling in money. But you have all of these parents of third through eighth graders that are just dying to throw money at programs that are going to enrich their kids. So if you offer them a robotics camp, they're going to go, you know, you know, uh, head over feet for for that program. You know what I mean? It's just like I don't know what the saying is, but um, these summer camps have a very are are very easy to make profitable. Very easy. It's a it's a little bit of upfront capital. The, again, the main resources you're spending is student volunteer time, which is what you have a ton of if you leverage it right. And then you can be financially independent when it comes to summer camps and your VEX IQ events. So right now, like uh, if you see, like if you've been into the gym, all the pipe and drape that you see around the field, uh, the speakers in the in the auxiliary pit, those are all pieces of hardware that 1678 purchased with profit that we made from our VEX IQ events. So every VEX IQ event we run, we're like, oh, it'd be really sweet if we had that. Well, we just made another $1,200, so let's go buy it, right? And our events get better and better. We have more and more resources and equipment at our disposal, and it's not putting any burden on our team. Now, we could do it the other way. We could say, you know what, this is a fundraising opportunity, and we just need, we need a couple other revenue sources, and that'd be totally acceptable too. But I'm just showing you the, the, the opportunities that open up when you have these, these, uh, these, uh, this disposable income you know, at your, at your disposal, I guess. <laughs> um, and, and we really believe that this is a snowball effect as far as growth goes for your team. So it's gonna make your team so much more sustainable when you know that you have, for us, we know we have like 500 kids in Davis before high school that are building VEX IQ robots. Like we know that because we have numbers to back that up. And so we know that a good portion of those 500 kids are gonna come into our FRC team. And we're already seeing that because our team is now 110 students in high school. Okay, and then we know that those kids in FRC, now that we have this pipeline, are going to all be feeding back their time and energy into making our VEX IQ program even stronger and even bigger. All right, which means we get more kids that are then going to come into FRC and it goes on and on and on. And I really, I mean, we've only had a couple years of this, right? But I really believe that that's where we're headed. We're gonna, like, I, I would not be surprised if we're at 160, 170 kids at some point in the high school team, and we have 1,000 kids building VEX IQ robots in Davis. And, and that's going to be a very, very meaningful percentage of the overall population because we're a town of, like, 30,000 adults and 30,000 college kids. So there's not a lot of students to work with. So um, we, I really think that this is, this is going to be something cool. Um, and then the big thing for me is this is a lot of distributed leadership. I, I'm working, I had a, a sophomore girl that organized all the logistics for four full weeks of summer camp, including processing all the payments, communicating with the parents when they need to be there. You guys know who that is, right? Yeah, I, amazing, right? And then we had another student who's a junior this year who is responsible for running all three of our VEX IQ competitions. So I'm working with him to answer his questions, but actually the student that ran all three last year is only a junior as well. So that student is teaching another student how to run all these events, right? And then they're both gonna be around next year to teach whatever st student's running all three events next year. I mean, it, this th it's distributed leadership, it's sustainable, the questions that I am having to answer are going down and down and down every year because these students are learning it and they're teaching the next batch of students. They're making better checklists. They're making better tools that the new students can use. And it's just, it's getting easier and easier for me to sustain a growing and growing and growing program. Um, and, and they're really contributing in meaningful ways. And I really believe that there's a lot of things that you can do as an FRC team that are not sustainable. There's a lot of trips that you can do to other countries. There's a lot of FRC teams that you can start in remote communities that are not sustainable for average students to contribute to in a meaningful way. It's gonna be mostly adults and mentors and people that have 10 plus years of experience that can effectively answer the questions of an adult in a rural community that's trying to start an FRC team, okay? But when your outreach is focused on VEX IQ, and these summer camps and other tools that we've talked about, these other methods that we've talked about, these are all things that students can not only contribute to, but actually take, take leadership roles in. And that is so key. For, if, you're, if you're a key adult in the room right now, that is a key aspect to keeping your program sustainable long term, is having students take initiative and taking over leadership roles because they're actually able to. If you're expecting a student to work with a teacher 
two hours away to keep their FRC team going, that student is not going to be able to sustain that sort of growth. They cannot answer the questions that that adult has. I'm sorry. I've seen it happen a ton of times. Students can't. So that is not a role that is made for high school students. But this is absolutely roles that students are able to accomplish, and we're seeing it happen right now. It's really, really cool. And I can't, as someone who, is, who would qualify himself as an overcommitted person, I cannot emphasize how critical this distributed leadership model is to uh, keeping my marriage intact. <laughs> Um, so case study, 1678. Let's go through some history really quick. So we started out in 2013. We had one uh, amazing high school student who said, why don't we start an FLL team in Davis? And we're like, oh, okay, sure, let's go for it. So we had one interested parent and we started our first FLL team. And then we started eight more teams in uh, 2014. Uh, well, I guess seven more teams, including the original one. So we were up to eight. Uh, and again, we did this by connecting students and students together. We actually did like an open like interest sign up where anyone in the community was able to put in their, you know, their student information, their information, where they went to school, what grade they were in. And we just kind of took that whole master list and a little bit like the way T-Ball does, we kind of paired them up. We made sure that every group had some parents that said they would be willing to coach. And then we send out some like basic team assignments and said, hey, here's Here's people in your community that are interested in doing the same thing you are. Why don't you get together and form a team? And you handle all the logistics. We'll provide a student mentor. Um, but that's how we got things going. We did the same thing next year, and the interest just grew even more. So in 2015, we had 23 teams in Davis. And uh, we hosted a, uh, a scrimmage and kind of a um, – uh, we hosted a, a tournament out of necessity because half our – uh, a quarter of our teams didn't get into any tournaments in the area in FLL, and I'll go through that in a little bit. Um, but in 2016, we dropped FLL, we went to Vex IQ, we did two weeks of summer camp, and actually there was a whole strategy around that, just to give a little history lesson. Now, now we had so a bunch this of- This is a history of what? Of 1678's involvement in these programs. In, in pre-high school? Yeah, in pre-high school, yeah. So this is 1678's history in this. So we started one team, eight teams, 23 teams, and we had, a, we had a, a pretty poor experience in 2015. And so we're looking at what we're gonna change for 2016. We read up about VEX IQ, we were sold on the model. So what, what we did was we ran two weeks of summer camp, we used that money to buy kits, and then I told my FLL coaches, if you give me your FLL kit, I will give you a VEX IQ kit. So I'm going to offset the capital cost that you are gonna put into this program Right? And then you can hop over to Vex IQ and you're actually going to be saving money because the registration costs are much lower in Vex IQ than they are in FLL. So we did that. We got all but three of our teams moved over to Vex IQ. And so we had 24 Vex IQ teams in 2016, a year after we had 23 FLL teams. And we used the capital that we had generated from summer camps to facilitate that switch. And we hosted three tournaments that year. Uh, maybe at this point, let's just save them for the end because I only have a couple more slides. Um, so in then 2017, we had a really great time running summer camps, a ton of interest. We actually had a, a pretty long wait list. So we doubled the number of weeks to four weeks and we still filled up those four weeks of camp, had about 35 students uh, volunteering as um, student mentors or student counselors in 20, 2017, um, generated about 24, yeah, about $24,000 in revenue. And some of that went to coach stipends and uh, some of that money went to uh, directly to the junior highs and elementary schools to buy them VEX IQ kits, which is how we started our elementary programs this year. And then uh, we also grew a little bit in the number of teams that we had. We bumped up to 26 VEX IQ teams and we're running three tournaments. We just ran our first one last weekend and we have one in November and one in December. So that's like the background to where we, how we got to this point. Um, so what are some of the results? Um, so we have students coming into our FRC team with VEX IQ and FLL experience. So we have students that right now, is, I mean, it's adorable. We have students like in fourth grade that just cannot wait to be on the Citrus Circuits when they're in high school. I mean, they're looking, they're, it's so far down the road for them, but they could not be more excited to be a part of the program uh, when they're in high school. Um, and then our, I, I'm more, even more excited about how engaged our FRC students are. Um, you know, we have over 30 student mentors this year that are every week, along with all the team meetings they're doing, every week they're going out into the community to a parent's house or to a local elementary school and they're mentoring fourth through eighth grade kids on how to build robots. They're doing that every week in the fall. And I don't even, I don't see any of it, right? I've never witnessed a single 
one of my students student mentoring but i always get feedback from the coaches oh man that they're just so great we love having you know uh we love having justin as a part of our team i get a lot of feedback about justin he's a lot of good feedback nothing bad um you know but 30 student mentors and then like you saw those pictures of all those camp counselors 35 camp counselors and actually that's just the number of unique students that did it uh, a lot of those students did multiple weeks so we had a, about 62 volunteer weeks worth of student um, student investment last year in summer camps and then we have actually 120 might be a low number because we have about 50 vex iq volunteers at each one of our events and some of those are going to be overlapping but some of those are going to be unique so every one of our students is required to volunteer at at least one of our vex iq events in the fall um, so that's just a ton a ton of engagement and this is just our really our second year picking up the pace on this stuff so i'm very excited about what's coming next but because i'm excited about it i'm here sharing it with you guys too um, so i get asked this question uh, why not? I mean, you're a first robotics team, so why aren't you doing FLL? And there's there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, Vex IQ is a more cost effective program, so we we are very interested in scalability. And there were a lot of things cost wise that were holding us back uh, from doing FLL, including the exorbitant registration cost just to get into a tournament. Um, Vex IQ. Uh, I strongly, I mean, I've, I've been building robots for 18 years. I've seen a lot of different robotics platforms. I've had a lot of hands-on experience with a lot of robotics platforms. And Vex IQ is a better robotics platform. It's a better learning platform for your students. It's more engaging because there's a controller. And I can't, I can't understate the psychological benefit of having a game controller when you're a third grader trying to build a robot, OK? I, 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 I it, it, saddens me how many students in FLL spend their whole season just trying to get a two-wheeled robot to drive straight, right? Where kids in Vex IQ, they're picking up a controller, they're scoring rings, they're having a blast of a time. Same age group, same exact set of skills, and one platform is able to allow, is inspiring them to do so much more. Whereas the other platform is punishing them because they have no idea how to get a robot to drive straight, okay? Uh, and the instructions do make it incredibly simple to jump right in and start playing the game and having a hoot of a time and the technical skills are going to come later but if you know anything about education when you're in third grade it's not about teaching them computer science 101 it's about getting them super excited about robots and then you let the rest come from there and that's exactly what vex iq is built to do uh, it has these built-in summer camp curriculums which are just awesome um, the vex iq events are super easy to run and i'm gonna uh, on the topic of events one of the other things that facilitated our switch is I had a lot of coaches that year we had 23 FLL teams. I had a lot of coaches come back to me and tell me if I have to go through the FLL registration process again, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm quitting coaching. And these are all volunteer parent coaches that are critical to our growth and sustainability and our distributed leadership model that we talked about. And so right then I'm like, if we don't get this problem fixed, our program's actually gonna shrink. It's not gonna grow. It's gonna be unsustainable and we're not gonna we're not gonna survive this growth. It's gonna shrink back down and we're not gonna meet our goals. And so I spent a lot of time barking up a lot of different trees trying to see if we could salvage this FLL program and make it something where we're gonna solve the problems that our coaches are having, and nobody was having it. All right. I ran to just a bunch of brick walls. And I got tired of it. And I'm like, well, you know what? There's this other great option. It actually has a lot of things that I like a lot more than FLL. So we jumped ship and we went to VexIQ and we're not looking back. It's been the best decision we made for our program. Um, and, and a big reason why that is, is VexIQ and, and also RECF. The, so VexIQ is run by Vex Robotics and there, or VexIQ, the, the hardware platform, this, all the contents of the box are developed by engineers that work at Vex Robotics. That's like the for-profit branch. And there's the not-for-profit branch called uh, Robotics Education Competition Foundation. And the RECF people want your experience as an adult who's volunteering your time to be the best possible. They are there to answer your questions. They're there to help you out. They bend over backwards to make sure that you have the tools and the resources that you need to be successful. I've had nothing but positive experiences with my RECF uh, uh, contacts that I work with, and I'm happy to forward you all the contact information. I'm sure they love to talk with you. They'd love to even go to your school district and meet with all your teachers and tell them how to integrate VEX into their curriculum. I mean, they are all about your experience as an educator in students' lives. And so VEX IQ has really put our program uh, like has really prioritized making sure our experience is a good one and 
honestly, after our experience with FLL, that was a breath of fresh air. And so I'm just, I'm, as, as fellow educators in the room, I'm just being honest about our experience to hopefully save some headaches for you down the road because it's, it's and it's not, I mean, I could go a lot of stories, which I'm happy to share with you later. Uh, feel free to come ask me about it. Um, so how do you get started? Uh, I really encourage you to contact us. We have this program. Basically, all of our stuff, we wrap up in a brand called Davis Youth Robotics. And so you can email us at that email address. That email goes to our student leads that lead our various programs, like summer camps and our tournaments. But that email also gets auto-forwarded to my personal email as well. So you can email that address, and I'll see it right away. Um, also, open invitation. I know everyone here is eh, fairly local, maybe a, maybe three or four hours away. Uh, but we do have two more VEX IQ events coming up at our hometown in Davis. It's right in the same high school as our shop. So you could you could come up and you can not only get a tour of the competition, but you could also get a tour of where 1678 meets. And we have two more events on Saturday the 18th and Sunday, uh, December 17th. So feel free to come. We'd love to show you around. I'll be there. I, again, I don't have any responsibilities once I'm there because the kids do everything. So I'm more than happy to talk your ear off while you come to the event. Um, you can also, and this is a big thing because this may seem like a lot of information, but based off of our experience, if you aren't doing summer camps right now, you can do a summer camp next summer. All right, Even if you have no experience with it, you can do a summer camp next summer, and we love to help you with that because a summer camp is going to be a great first step into a sustainable uh, STEM pipeline model. And so we, we'd love to help you get started on summer camps. If that's something that your team hasn't done before and you're looking to grow in a certain area, this would be a great next step is, is to consider hosting a week of summer camp and see where it goes from there. Um, and you could also start VEX IQ teams. That's a, probably it's a little bit more difficult because you got to get a little bit more hooked up in the community, find parents that are interested or a teacher that's interested. But you could also start VEX IQ teams. And there's plenty of tournaments for teams to attend in the area. So um, that's another option as well. Um, that is the conclusion of my slides. Thank you, everyone, for your attention and time. And we have a lot of time for questions, I think, which is <coughs> what I was hoping for. It looks like we have at least 10 minutes. So um, let's, let's go to questions now. Who has questions or anything like that? Thanks for watching our video. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to fruit punch that like button and comment your team number down below. If you want to subscribe, click over here. If you want to watch more Fall Workshop videos, click over here. I'm from Team 1678, and this is Citrus.